Hello and welcome to the Runners World Podcast with me, Rick Pearson. And me, Ben Hobson. Today we're joined by esteemed editor-in-chief of Runners World, Andy Dixon. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me on. Pleasure. And now, ultra runner. Well, actually, he was one anyway, but let's... 50 mile. A 50 mile ultra runner. And that's, maybe that's where, where ultra running truly begin <laughs> well i wouldn't say that you said that um but yes i brought the 50 mile mark a few weeks ago um and that's what i'm here to talk about this morning lessons learned lessons learned yes. in the 50. yeah did we ever do this with your 100 did we ever give you the grace to, to yeah. let you talk about I, the I result i bored on for about a month i think that's it was true, almost actually. like a sort of concept month <laughs> mostly around sort of fear and regret and, and then it toilet was like, breaks oh my god i actually did it um can we talk before we go into the it's five lessons? Well, an indeterminate number. There's probably about five, five or six. Okay, five or yeah. six. Five or six things you learned about doing your first 50 mile ultra race. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, Good stuff. What about motivation though? Why did you want to do it to start off with? Well, it was because I basically because I turned 50. So being a kind of very simplistic kind of. Ce- celebration, commiseration of the fact that <laughs> I thought you were going to say a very simplistic man. I, went yeah, I am a s- simplistic <laughs> man. Um, I wanted to mark that half century milestone uh, with some miles. I mean, other people, you know, get a tattoo or uh, a sports car. I thought I'd really punish myself and do a, a 50 mile run. So um, that's what I did. I, I mean, I started <clears throat> thinking about it early in the year. Uh, and then it was a case of trying to find the ultra that was right, that could kind of fit into my schedule because I was also doing marathons and mountain marathon early in the summer. And um, once I'd done that, it was all about starting the training and starting the worrying (laughs) (laughs) as it happens. Um, But yeah, it all all turned out well in the end. Oh, that's good. I'm not spoiling the ending. Still here, he's alive. Yeah, yeah, I came through it all right. Would you say that's tip number one? Don't worry too much. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I mean, I think... It, 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 I haven't written this down, but I mean, you spend, I, I spent a lot of time planning and plotting which ultra was going to be best, what time of year, you know, what's the kind of elevation profile, what's nutrition going to be like. And I spent a lot of time planning all that. And I think that led me, I, I mean, you need to do that, yeah. you, you know, because it's not just like a 5K where you just like, right, I can just bash that out on no training. You have to prepare, but I think when it came to the actual race itself, I'd done so much planning and thought and quite a a lot of anxiety as well. You know, I think, um, you know, they say that you you should have goals that scare you a little and excite you a lot. And this did scare me, you know, I, I never took it for granted. You know, I did the London Marathon a few weeks before it. And while I, I did train for that, because I know what marathons require, it was, you know, this was like, my, that was my 23rd marathon. So it was like, yeah, I know what, what, how, what You're going to finish, expect. aren't you? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I know it'll get tiring towards the end. I know it's all about the long runs. Whereas the 50 mile ultra was a, a voyage into the unknown. It was like, well, I, I, I really don't know whether I'm going to finish this because um, the training runs that I was doing, I was, I was bonking. Horribly, and and this is where where actually Rick helped me because I realised that I think because I was coming off marathon training into ultra training, I was carrying that marathon training mentality, which is you start a long run and you're aiming for a, a set pace, and you you're not really meant to stop ideally. Um, and it was only when I realised with Rick's advice that actually ultra certainly the ultra race itself but ultra training runs it just got to be slower and you got to walk in them um so my last two big training runs i just took days i mean that was a bit of a challenge i took days off work and just treated them as a kind of all day run hike yeah. you know for four five five and a half hours T- obviously I had food and water um and just made a <laughs> made a kind of strange day out of them <laughs> um yeah. So yeah, I think it was it, that was, that was the kind of new mindset for for ultra running. It was, you know, in, in the actual race itself, um, you know, setting off, uh, you know, eleven minute miling. Obviously, you know, the the kind of thing that everyone kind of says about ultra running is you you walk the inclines yeah. from from the start, not just when you get tired. And I think that's all really solid advice, um, which really helped me on the day to get to get through. 
Um, but yeah, I, I think the nutrition part of things was a big, a big, not a worry. It just required a lot of thought. Um, Trial and error. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I worked out that I could eat bagels on the move and not have problems with them. Um, but in the end, uh, the, the the ultra that I chose had is was like three laps, three and a half laps around a kind of reservoir near Sheffield, Lady Bower. Um, and I was worried that it would be a bit repetitive, but in the end it was perfect because it meant that it, each 15 mile lap and plus one five mile lap, there was an inbuilt kind of stop at each one where you could get back to the car, open up the boot, get food, n- new food, refill the kind of bladder, um, not not my bladder, the water bladder. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> to clarify. Empty one bladder, fill up another yes. bladder. Yeah, right. um, and it really broke the race down into chunks that made it manageable. In the end, I packed far too much food, but it's obviously best to have too much than too little. In the end, all I took on, on the, re- the run itself was gels every 25 minutes, a gel every 25 minutes, uh, which I set a timer in my watch for, which really helped. Um, and there's 25 minutes just flashed by it. It was like, I'd finish one gel and it'd be like, right, take another. Yeah. But you, you, you need the, you know, you need to be that disciplined. Cause I think if you just start getting tired and forgetting about it, yeah. that's when your levels drop and you start to get yeah. tired and it's hard to pull it back after you've, um, yeah. Once you get in a hole. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I feel like that's two lessons there, Andy, isn't there? There's, there's like, quite a few in there. Sorry, like, I kind of rambled there's, there's, on. <laughs> there's, 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 sort of tr- there's training and maybe reframing training in, u- in ultra terms. So like walking fine. Mindset. Mindset, a reframing mindset. And then the importance of nutrition being um, disciplined with your nutrition on the day. Even I think that's particularly true, like you say, at the start, because like, I'm not hungry. I can run for 10 or 15 miles without any, any fuel. And then it's like, actually, but then if you have to run 30 or 40 miles after that, that's when it's a an issue yeah 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 Yeah. um so it was uh, a lot of a lot of prep um the mindset thing i think was was really useful to kind of click into that um because it's like i said it's different to to normal training and running marathons or or shorter races because it's not really i mean what i found liberating during the race is that for well it's not for everyone. I mean, the, the the front runners might feel different, but I didn't have any real time goal. It was just about finishing. Yeah. So it was, it's kind of liberating because yeah. you're not you're not feeling like from the get go. God, am I on pace? What am I doing? What was that first mile split? My first mile split, as I said, was like eleven and a half minutes. Um, and my overall pace for the fifty miles was like eleven. So it was kind of slower than average. So it's really nice to ease your, ease yourself into a race rather than be stressed from the yeah, start yeah, yeah, yeah. um and and you know just that sense of uh w- with the other runners as well well the, the one thing i should say is that um the race that i chose was quite quite a, a small race and because it was a lap course there was 20 a 20 mile race and a 35 mile race on the same morning but those were, so everyone's kind of milling about the kind of car the car park and the marquee and i'm like yeah this is quite buzzy and then they set they set off the the twenty and thirty five mile races half an hour before the fifty mile. Oh race. right! So you're left and with this. The car park like, empty. Oh, <laughs> There's literally no one left apart from ten of us. And I was like, top oh, ten right. finish. So literally yeah. guaranteed. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So in the end, I, I actually so I finished fourth. Um, Woohoo! And managed to get a uh, I won a bottle of wine because I was the first uh, 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 and I quote first oldie, <laughs> uh, which seems a, a, an appropriate way to celebrate yeah. turning fifty to actually win a win an age age group prize. <laughs> so I won a bottle of wine, um, but uh, you know between the ten of us, yeah. you, you obviously uh, because it was kind of um, a lap course and you're run, running up and down, you kept bumping in not bumping into each other you didn't really stop but you kept seeing your, your other 50 mile races and it, it really felt like we weren't competing with each other we were all competing against the distance and you know there's a real sense of spirit and camaraderie and you're all kind of kind of fighting towards that same goal rather than it being a a race where you're you're kind of trying to beat Chasing each people other. down. Yeah, that yeah. person in front that you kind of have keep an eye on for that half marathon when you're like going to catch that person. It's yeah. Not, it's absolutely not um, the case. So that was, you know, that was a lovely part of it. And it was, you know, it was a, just a, a really nice 
um, nice experience. The race it, it itself, um, I think the other the other thing I discovered was the the it, particularly in training, not so much on the the day itself, was just the value of um, podcasts. Oh yeah, like yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Didn't listen to a single one of this though. Um, <laughs> and audio books as well, because I, yeah. I I found that they rather than music, I, I trained to music um, on long runs previous to this, but I. For the really long training runs, I just got into like audio books and I just found that it really distracting yourself in a, in a narrative and a story that's going on in your ears was really helpful. Come um, on, who did you go for? I know this. Well, there was a lot of partridge, the, wasn't it? There was a part. There was a partridge from the Oast House season two. That was on the the, the day itself, just to make me um, to make me laugh, yeah. which it it always does. Um, it, it, without fail, during training, I was listening to the um, Elton John audio about me which was like which is yeah. great which I, i'd highly recommend as well because it's really funny and honest i'm not that, that much of an elton john fan i should say but i just his story is amazing and it's yeah. brilliantly read by taron edgerton so um a little a little tip there but yeah so that and also during the race itself just those little kind of distracting pleasures uh really take on a, a monumental Difference, like I think at 35 miles, which was the last rest stop, so I was getting ready for the last lap. I just put on a um, a dry cap. Oh, <laughs> what a treat! I, you know, I didn't yeah. want to. I, I mean, I had a change of clothes as well, and I was kind of it had been drizzling, so I was kind of wet, but it didn't bother me that much. But just taking off a cap, putting a dry one on, just was like, oh, that's really nice. I've, I've got a dry head again. <laughs> other other tactics are a new pair of socks. Socks has got to be a real. Yeah, somebody brush their teeth. Oh, that's not. Oh, after all, all that kind sort of waking you up, sticky, sort of, yeah. sugary gel mouth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anything to sort of feel like you're starting again, or sometimes reinvigorating yourself. Surprising some of the stuff, but um, yeah. Were, were there any real low moments? Any times where you're like, you know what? There's this is actually, I don't think I'm going to do it. Or not on the the day itself. I think because of the because of the laps thing. Um, I I think probably the the toughest period was probably um probably between uh 30 and 40 miles yeah. um not and i didn't it, not in a really acute dark way just to kind of like right i've already been running for 30 miles i've still got 20 to go yeah. um which is like a long tra- normally in in the olden days of marathon training 20 mile long run you think oh my god yeah. this is a tough but um but I just rode it, rode it out. Listen, yeah. put, put, listen to a bit of Partridge um, to distract myself. I also was, uh, I mean, it obviously didn't really fool me, but I kept pretending that it was a hundred miler. Yeah. So I was like, well, you know, I'm at mile thirty in in the fifty miler. In a hundred miler, this would be mile eighty, and that's like you you you, you, you really are. You're on you're the you're there, on yeah. the final yeah. you're on the final straight here. Yeah. And just trying to fool myself like that with a few little mental tricks. I really helped. like that. I remember the one we did before. So we did the uh, country to capital, wasn't it? Which is 42 miles. But I'm pretty sure it's the same canal that, that the Grand, it's the Grand Union Canal, isn't it? Which is also a 145, 135 mile race. And I was like, imagine those people got to like just outside Paddington. They had 10 miles to go. Hmm. They'd have made it, you know? And that's like, yeah. whereas like, oh, we've run for 30 miles. It's like... Okay, and that feels big in the context of today, but there are people here who like looked at it in a different context. This is this is like a lap of honour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's useful that stuff. You did. Um, I remember speaking to you after your thirty-mile training run, and you were very much like, "I don't know how I'm going to do twenty more after that." Yeah, and that was probably like a pace thing, but also just it was interesting. You say that the hard bit wasn't really in the race; it was in the build-up. Yeah, and kind of getting over those like distance barriers in your head. Yeah, it was absolutely, and I, and I think when I look back, again, this was where where Rick helped. You know that that thirty mile, which was my last long training run, I was you know my first few miles were like nine minute miling, which is just too fast yeah. basically. So when it got into the the later miles, I was just slowing down massively, um, and I just thought, God, yeah, if I'm doing that on a thirty mile run. Like, like you say, how are you going to do the next 20? Yeah. Um, so it was just a case of really slowing down the the, the average pace and, and uh, running much slower than you think you need to because, you, you know, your your 
you can run faster and your body's kind of telling you to run faster because you, you, you kind of grooved into natu- your natural running pace is, is faster than that. So it, it, it feels unnatural to run that slow, but yeah. I think um, just slowing down, um, w- walking the, the inclines and the hills. Also the, the, the first, la- the, the, the short lap was at the start of this race. So there's a, there's a little break after five miles. Right. So that was just a good way to, to, to check it. Um, I mean, I remember you mentioned the country to capital. That's what I think helped us on, on that run was the fact that the first, was it 23 miles were all self-navigated? So yeah, you had to concentrate on something else. Yeah, you, you, had, yeah. To, you had to stop uh, and check that you were on a route and check your map. And there was lots of styles, wasn't there, that you had to kind of get over. So they, those kind of inbuilt kind of inbuilt kind of literal hurdles to, yeah. s- to that prevent you from going off too fast yeah. i think really really helped so i totally um, agree i think like um someone said oh it's my first 50 or whatever i'd say like pick somewhere that is changing and has hills and has some undulation otherwise like you're left with the canal which i think mentally if you're like it's all flat it's the only reason to to slow down or walk is um it can feel like a bit of defeat which i know it shouldn't doesn't change i mean i think prob- those 24-hour track races i think they're probably the biggest or the toughest ones to do because you're like nothing's going to change here there's no like the land isn't helping me out here or anything like that and yeah i think sometimes to try and avoid hills and these things isn't is to sort of miss the bigger point actually totally uh, and, and i think you know again uh, the route that or the race that i did had had undulations and elevation yeah. i wouldn't say any kind of real steep hills but it just kept. It was like rolling terrain, which just kept um, kept things different. Yeah, exactly. You yeah, know, and, yeah. and obviously I was walking the kind of the the steeper inclines. So it's. I would actually definitely for for my next one, if there is a next one, de- I would definitely pick a. I think that was a um, sign up straight away. Wasn't it? <laughs> pick a, a, a hilly a hilly route because it, it it's counterintuitive, but I think it makes it easier because it just breaks it down. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, my respect goes out to people that that run 24 hour track races because i just find that mind boggling yeah <laughs> agreed agreed um we've talked about finding your why on here before did you have a a, a kind of a big motivation for doing it because i'd imagine that is helpful isn't it if you're like i really want to do this because did you have that and did you kind of lean on that in the race at all yeah, I mean, I guess it was just to to prove to myself that I've still still, still got still, still got, got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at fifty. Um, yeah, it was just to kind of it was just a new thing. You know, I've been running for for fifteen years now, and it's uh, it's hard, increasingly hard to find new new experiences. Like I said, I've I've run lots of marathons. I always enjoy doing London because it's my home city marathon and the crowds are amazing but it's ju- it was just finding a new thing to do and uh, as i've said all of the kind of the new challenges uh, of planning and nutrition um it was just to prove to myself that i could try something new like like i said a goal that scared me slightly yeah. um do the planning follow it through and 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 achieve so um you know i'm still really pleased to have got it done and i, I you know rick's been kind of joshing me that the next step will be a 100 miler um and you know i, w- I wouldn't rule it out i don't think yeah. it's going to be ne- i don't think it's going to be next year yeah. i think i need time to to make it up to the to my wife <laughs> my daughter <laughs> the amount of time that i spent either off running or um, talking or it. talking about it or worrying about it or just lying on the couch kind of moaning about my aching quads um, they need a bit of recovery time as well, I'm sure. It's funny, isn't it? I think sometimes, like, just having the, uh, not like the audacity, but maybe like the bravery to sign up to these events is actually, th- that's some of the hardest bit about it when you're like, you know what, I'm going to just back myself actually to finish it's it. It's much easier not to do it. Yeah. For all the reasons that we'd like, the opposites of all that we've just said, like, you don't have the time. Oh, I haven't got time. I haven't got the energy. I haven't got the means. Maybe even like the, the belief as well. Belief, like, it's... Yeah. So it's definitely a roll of the dice. Even if you have done 23 f- marathons or however many, you know, you, you, yeah. that's a huge bank of experience and knowledge on running. And you've been running 15 years and, you know, it's your job as well. And you kind of, you just simulate all this sort of information and assume that it'd be dead cert that you could, but it's 
you don't know do you you just you haven't until you've done it you've absolutely got no way of gauging if you can do it or not yeah i would i would agree that you know there's times before i i kind of actually entered where i was just like oh it's just going to be a lot of time and a lot of effort and there's this part of you that just thinks it's just be easier not to do it but i'm glad i did and and um so that's what i would say to people if they're considering it um just just sign up and then Obviously, then you need to prepare for it, but just sign up and, and get that done, and then it and then it'll help focus your mind and motivate you. Um, and also, don't have any uh, preconceptions about who else will be in the race because I don't think I don't think there is a, a an archetypal ultra runner. I think that, yeah. that certainly the ten people who were in my race were were just. I mean, I didn't get to know them that well, but they just were like normal people, yeah. um, men, women, uh, oldies like me younger people and and so don't feel like there's a kind of uh, you know there's a certain requirement of what an ultra runner looks like it's 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 so varied it, it's it's you basically it's yeah. anyone who wants to be did you ever any like worries about just being the last last person on course were you worried about being, like, <laughs> in the dark you, yeah did you like think oh you know i've never done this before am i just going to be dropped by like as you say like a group of lean little mountain whippets <laughs> uh well i did when when the other two races cleared off and i saw there was only 10 people yeah. left uh but it, honestly finishing last wouldn't have bothered me because my goal was just to finish yeah. uh, result the result of where i finished was unimportant yes it was nice to get a bottle of wine at the end yeah, of but, course um it wouldn't have, have bothered me uh it was all it was all about the finishing but um yeah well, that was, I mean, that was the other thing that you mentioned. The only, the only other, well, the new experience was was running in the dark as well. Right. Okay. That, yeah, um, yeah. That was uh, not as bad as I'd feared. I expected it to be like before the run. I thought, oh, God, it's going to be. I'm going to be absolutely knackered. It's going to be getting dark. It's just going to be horrible. And and it wasn't that bad. It was just I actually found it novel, mm. a novel experience. It was like right, let's here's a new added layer of challenge yeah. but let's get this done yeah um the only kind of weird bit was i had my i had a cap on and I had my head torch above the brim of the cap so when it was shut it was kind of casting a shadow beneath like on the ground and and that's the closest i came to hallucinating <laughs> right. where it was yeah. like i almost i was almost like a fighter pilot with this kind of very heads up display on the ground so i, I was like oh i don't like that so i just took the cap off no, I actually turned it backwards. Right. So I ended up finishing the race looking like some kind of American kid <laughs> uh, with a head torch on. Love it. Um, like Andy Roddick has just completely... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, good. It was good. Brilliant stuff. Andy, thanks for coming on the Runners World podcast, telling us more about the 50-mile race. And we look forward to having you back, what, 18 months and then the 100-miler? Yes. Uh, right. More lessons okay. incoming. Excellent. We'll sign you up today. Well, you two have done them now. Oh, ben, it's an so overarching you. pressure on me to perform. Someone's got to do that track race at 24 hours. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> no, 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 no. So that brings us to the end of this week's Runners World podcast. A huge thanks to our guest, Andy Dixon, and to you, of course, for listening. If you're searching for the ultimate last-minute Christmas gift, a subscription to Runners World magazine is the way to do it. Head to the internet, Google Runners World UK subscription, find the correct website, subscribe. Congratulations, you've made everyone happy. If you'd like to continue making everyone happy, please subscribe to this podcast. Click the little button, subscribe. You've done it. Congratulations. Merry Christmas. Hear from us soon. Bye-bye.